kind of seemed like the, the mantra of our season. You know, we're in a lot of different situations and a couple plays here and there. I uh, give our kids credit. You know, we fought and scrapped through everything. But we've got to find a way to overcome those those obstacles and find a way to come out with a win. And, and so it was another tough one on Saturday. Get the ball down to the 20, have some chances. But, but there's a lot of plays that are left out there. And, and, and kind of a recap of the season, it seemed like that way. You know, there's a couple games, maybe the Humboldt State game, Colorado Mines game early that, you know, those teams are pretty pretty good football teams, but the other nine games, we certainly had our chances, and that's going to be our uh, challenge this offseason is find those pieces together. Um, excited about what we bring back offensively. I think we broke every school record in the book offensively, uh, putting a lot of points up on that end. we got to do a better job on the defensive side of the ball and do a better job on the special team side of the ball and line up and compete. But I really like the growth of a lot of these guys. We played a lot of young players, and so the future is in a good spot here. We're excited about where we're at on that piece. Uh, the GNAC conference awards did come out. Uh, they just released them about a half an hour ago. Um, I think we're well represented, as we should be with our players on that. Uh, Trent McKinney was the newcomer of the year that they vote for on the GNAC. He was also the first team quarterback in the GNAC. Uh, Josh Hostrad, our left tackle, was the first team all conference uh, all offensive line selection. Elijah Balovich, our tight end, was the second team all conference on the offensive side. And Kevin Thompson, our running back, which he only played in seven games and five of them GNAC, was an honorable mention. On the defensive side, uh, Jay Kett was a second team all conference linebacker, and Jay Lowden was an honorable mention uh, uh, linebacker in those pieces. So, very well deserved accolades for, for those young men, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And those are the areas we need to improve on. Uh, we got five coaches on the road to improve right now, so it, it never ends. We certainly have a pretty good handle on what our needs are and where we need to be, and I really don't think we're, we're far away at all from, from being where this program needs to be. We're a competitive Division II program. If you look at the games, now we've got to find a way to take that next step. Instead of losing games by by a few scores, find a way to win those football games. Any questions I can answer for anybody about the Western Oregon blizzard or uh, the season in general? Injuries? Uh, yes. I hate to get hurt the last game of the season, but did yeah. anybody get there was no major, Trent hurt his knee, that's why he didn't play in those last two series on that, but I don't think it's going to be anything major. You know we'll have a handful, I think we got six or eight surgeries we'll be having in the next next few weeks with guys you know, throughout the season. Um, so you know, we got hit by the injury bug, but you know when you play 11 games straight, that's pretty normal. So we, the biggest deal is trying to get those guys, you know, have surgery right away, get them healthy, get them over the break, and hopefully get them back for winter conditioning and spring ball. As far as our recruiting goes, Stacy, uh, are you looking at the defense more than absolutely? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think when you look at the offensive side of the ball, we've got five or six legitimate Division II players that are standing out, and, and and maybe even more than that. But you know, I think that Division II, we've we've got to be better on the defensive side of the ball, and we've got to get you know. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. Certainly, we'll look at everything we're doing, how we're teaching, uh, what schemes we're using. All, all those things will fall into it in the next few weeks as I, as I do a full recap. But we've got to make sure that we've got guys that can compete at the GNAC Division II level. So it's an overall emphasis. We will find the answers to that. What it's worth, I thought the defense did improve as the season went on. Yeah, and, and the GNAC's a good conference. It's, it, it's a good offensive conference. You're not going to have a, a week off with that. And, you know, sometimes you don't realize that until you're knee deep into it. But I've been well impressed with that, too. Coach, how's the GNAC and the RMAC compare to each other? Yeah, you know, again, if you look head to head, I think the GNAC's 37 and 11 against the RMAC. Um, now, again, who's playing who? Sometimes that's not the cleanest picture with it. And, and a lot of those games were played before Pueblo entered the league, and certainly Pueblo's been the, the cream of the crop. Um, you know, Colorado Mines is a playoff team this year. They're 10 and 1, but they're only lost to Pueblo. So I think, you know, you, they're the, you know, that second tier group of the RMAC, and we certainly know them, know them well. But the GNAC as a whole, it's a smaller conference, but boy, it, it's tough. It, it's a solid conference. It, you know, it's in a tough region. Um, you know, Azusa gets doesn't make the playoffs. You know, Sioux Falls doesn't make the playoffs in the region. We're talking about two 10 and one teams that are certainly playoff worthy, in my opinion, not making it. So those are hard things. But the GNAC is very, very sound conference. And you know, the history, like I said, it's GNAC won a lot of those games. But it'd be interesting to see if they they play each other in some other conference a little bit more. How it would go. Priorities, Stacy, recruiting. Yeah, priorities, recruiting. Um, I think our defensive backfield is at the top of that that priority. We've got to be able to. Do a better job coverage on the backfield, and with that goes in finding a better pass rush up front. So finding a you know a, a speed rush, an interior pass rush, because those things go hand in hand. All of a sudden you look a lot good, a lot better on the back end if you're rushing the passer. 
And it doesn't matter how good your secondary is if you're not rushing the passer. So those things are critical. Uh, we lose three senior linebackers, so we need to replace those places. I need to find a kicker, and I think that's a huge piece of putting points on the board and changing the field position with that. Uh, we lose some old linemen. So on the offensive side of the ball, certainly finding an offensive lineman group that, that can come in. we got some good young ones there. And then I think finding a compliment for Kevin Thompson at the running back position are, are all needs at this point. Can you find junior college players at all? We can. We can. You know, I mean, we certainly scour. We, we hit every junior college in, in the United States, and, and, and we look at that. And you know, people say, well, the JC fit academically. But when you go through a JC roster of 100 kids, there's usually one or two that have the academic fit for us. And, and most of those kids have done well once we've gotten here. Now it takes us some time and, and some energy to scour through that. Um, but you, you look at kids that made a lot of plays. Marcus Sanchez is a junior college kid. Uh, Rashad Ridley is a junior college kid. And I go down the list. Jay Lotta was a junior college kid. So as long as we do our time and our research, as we do with anyone, whether it's junior college or high school, we want to make sure that it's the right fit here. And that's as important as anything. Do they fit this institution academically? Do they fit this community for the type of person that we want to represent in this? All right, thanks again for coming down. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Hard Rocker men's basketball had three games in four days, and uh, they're getting ready to hit the road, head down to Colorado, take on some top teams in the RMAC and Colorado Mines and Metro State. Welcome up head coach Jason Henry. We did have three games in four days. Um, did end the results that we wanted, especially the last game. If you're going to win any of those three games, yeah, you want to win the last game, and and uh, we didn't get it done. So, as far as our recap of the games, we did play minus the first night uh, last Friday, and um, the minus good team. You know, they're they're going <coughs> to excuse me. I just had a spicy wing too. So the old <laughs> very good wings though, Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, but we, uh, uh, you know, did some good things in that game. You know, we, we guarded pretty well. It was our first game out. Uh, did a lot of good things. And, and like I said, it's uh, a pretty good team that they're going to be competitive in the Northern Sun over there. And, uh, uh, you know, just didn't find a way to get it done. Uh, but, but did a lot of good things in that game. Then the next night we had University of Mary, uh, which is a very athletic team. Um, did a lot of good things uh, against them, especially on the defensive end. Held them to 61 points. Um, you know, really, really challenged them uh, every every shot that they took, and, and uh, you know, one guy kind of took over and made some plays as, it, as what happened in uh, Minot as well. We just got to guard the ball better and, and do that. But the second half against uh, Mary, we shot 19 percent. You know, so obviously, as Kansas found out last night, if you shoot 19 percent, you lose by 30 some. So the fact that you know we're not Kansas, but you know, we still kept the game close and, and to be honest, had a chance to, uh, you know, pull within a few points at the end and, and you lose by a few, but shoot 19% and not get blown out uh, was a tribute to our defensive effort uh, in doing some things that way. But I uh, went back and looked at some things. Obviously didn't have a lot of time to practice. Went and, uh, uh, to start getting ready for Black Hills on Monday. So got to watch some tape and, and try to get some things organized. But, you know, I've talk, talked to a lot of people about that. Is, you know, geez, our offense is struggling in this, struggling in that. Well, when the ball doesn't go in the hole, you're really going to struggle. But go back and watch the, the film. We got everything that we could have wanted, from transition buckets to wide open 14, 15 footers, and wide open threes. I mean, everything that we could uh, imagine we want to get uh, within our offensive end and just get knocked down the shot. So, um, once again, didn't get it done that night. And the frustrating part is, is we open up against two teams that we can definitely compete with right now. Uh, definitely, I don't know, should have won, but definitely could have won. Uh, and they're at home, you know. So it's kind of frustrating that way that we felt like, uh, you know, we let a couple slip away, but had to regroup right away. And we get into the um, BH game and did a lot of great things. We got, uh, you know, basically control an entire game, play 36 minutes. 37 minutes, I'll play them up by 10 with four minutes to go. And I, I would like to say the wheels fell off, uh, but that's not really what happened. Um, and just so many different things that it's hard enough to keep a lead, especially against a team like that, that likes to shoot the threes, 
Um, you know, they could get hot. We did a great job controlling the tempo. Um, just doing so many things in that game to get a 10-point lead. And part of it was the fact that when they, you know, you get down to the game and they shoot five for 17 from the three-point line. If you give me that anytime you play a Black Hill State team, anytime you play a, a three-point shooting team that's got a bunch of guards, and I'd say we got a 10-point win easily. And we get done, and of course we got the loss. So, uh, you know, we had so many different things that happened in that game. And, and, and the biggest thing, and I told our guys 100%, we do not leave this locker room. And as much as people are going to whine about uh, the scores table, having four different stops, and, and, and it did. It truly changed the out, not the outcome, but just how the flow of the game was going. When you, I finally went and timed it after the fourth time I watched the video. And it was three minutes and 28 seconds of, of dead time, and we're basically in control of the game. So, you know, crazy things like that that happen, and then, you know, all the officials and all this guy making a play finally, and that, you know, all those things that could happen. Bottom line is we miss a layup, we miss a couple free throws. We do our job, and we still win the game. You know, so that's how I told our guys to look at it. We don't make excuses. We just got to be better and make sure that we can finish. So um, that was the BH game. Uh, we do have coming up. Uh, <laughs> doesn't get any easier. We go down to uh, play some RMAC opponents and we play the top two teams in the conference year after year with uh, Metro uh, out of the Denver area, right downtown Denver. Uh, they played in the championship the last couple of years of all of Division II, not just the conference championship. They're 22 and all last year again in the conference. They're 32 and three, something the last two or three years. Uh, they got it rolling, you know, there's no doubt about it. But I want to show our guys this year before we jump into the RMAC and what it truly is to be a top team in the RMAC, and uh, we're going to find out in a hurry what that means. And then the next night is a big night actually for us. We recruit against Colorado School of Mines quite a bit, um, you know, so we got to make sure we go in there and be competitive, uh, have a chance, put ourselves in a position to win the game uh, at the end. So uh, that's our next couple games. Uh, we leave tomorrow already. Uh, we couldn't practice on Tuesday because of the NCAA rules which we didn't want to practice on Tuesday anyway. We needed a day off, um, but we couldn't practice. Now we'll have a good practice today, and then we go play a couple more games, you know? So it's, uh, it never ends. Then next week, we play Wednesday, Friday, Saturday again. So we are looking forward to being in the RMAC. There's no doubt about that. But any questions on uh, recap of those three games, the two coming up? I don't know if we're doing a lunch in after that, but Thanksgiving, no lunch in next week. So we got the Thanksgiving tournament coming up, but. Any major questions on the eight games we have in the eight or the 16 days? Coming in for Thanksgiving, we got a team out of Southeast Oklahoma, uh, which is a team we've actually played last year. Very, very good. And uh, we play them on Wednesday. We play Shattered State, which is we're trying to make a, more of a rival of things around here. Um, very athletic. They're a lot like Black Hills, just a little bit bigger. But love to shoot the three, get up and down the court. And then another team from Oklahoma as well uh, on that um, Saturday's game. So um, very good teams coming in here again. Uh, they get a chance to play each other. The women play on Friday. So Friday's games, there's a game at 2, 5, and 7. Uh, so a lot of basketball. Us men that send the wives out to go get Christmas shopping done or whatever, we got a place to be or vice versa. You know, in my case, I got to do all the shopping. So. Any other questions? Do you like being on the other side of the gym? Do I like being on the other side of the gym as far as when I'm playing games? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant last night cheering for uh, Ryan where I could actually enjoy the game and <laughs> watch him win. That's being on the other side of the gym. Uh, that was kind of nice with Ryan's game, he gets a chance to talk to us about it. But, but yeah, with our scores tables and things, um, I absolutely hate it right now because we're 0 2 with that setup. So I think it's a great setup. I like it personally. Um, but uh, the fact we need to, you know, we got some new jerseys, we got a new setup there, and we haven't wanted them yet, so we got to take care of that. Anything else? All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Coach. A great crowd last night at the King Center and the Hard Rock women got a big win over Black Hill State. Head Coach Ryan Larson to tell you about it. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. It's always good to get down here at Wild Wings, eat those wings. I, I stole a couple of Coach Henry's wings while he's up here. Um, yeah, kind of the recap for the weekend. Uh, we had St. Cloud both Friday and Saturday. 
Uh, at luncheon last week, we I spoke about St. Cloud, and uh, basically what I said is they're a big physical team. And uh, Friday night, you know, we can preach all week long how big and physical a team is, but until the girls actually go out there and try to box someone out, they don't really realize it. And uh, they figured that out that night. That boy, St. Cloud, there, there's some strong girls out there, and. Uh, I can't remember exactly how many offensive rebounds we gave up, but it was way too many. And uh, a team like St. Cloud, you give them multiple opportunities to score, they're going to take advantage of it. And that was kind of the story, story of the game there. Um, the nice thing about Saturday is we, we fixed that problem. Our kids played a lot more tougher. Uh, they focused in on rebounding, they made some hustle plays, they just played physical. Um, we did the job rebounding, but the story of that game, we, we turned it over at a phonetic pace. It was just, we were out of control a lot of times. Uh, at halftime, I told the team, we we're, on, we're on pace to set an NCAA record for turnovers. Uh, we did take care of the ball a little bit better that second half, but uh, just by then, you know, we couldn't quite catch up. We give the team 27 turnovers like we did, uh, they're going to make you pay, just like offensive rebounds. Every time you come up empty on the offensive end, uh, you're putting yourself in a big disadvantage there. Uh, overall, I was I was pleased with what I saw. I was really pleased with uh, the adjustments that we made, uh, some individual uh, gains that kids had made uh, game-wise, uh, and you know it's, it's just obvious to see that we're a much improved team from last year. Um, but as we told the kids yesterday, you know I got up, caught up in a little bit. Uh, everybody's telling me, "Wow, you guys are improved, you're improved, you're improved." It doesn't really mean much until you go get a W. And uh, we got that W last night. It was a, it was a great win. Um, man, kids just played tough. They, they really did. We, we really defended. Uh, I'd like to give a... Uh, Alexis Long got a tremendous defensive game. She struggled a little bit offensively, but she held Chelsea Bigler, Black Hills State lead score, zero points in the first half. Alexis got a little foul trouble in the second half, and kind of let Bigler get loose a little bit. But uh, Alexis had a whale of a game defensively. A tremendous effort there, uh, along with a lot of other kids. You know, Devin Ashley, she had to guard on the perimeter a lot last night because uh, they play four guards. Yeah, you know, Devin, you know, she's always guarding a post, and she did a great job guarding their guards. Uh, so that's a little different for us. Uh, so two, two, two tremendous defensive efforts there last night by kids, uh, just really answering the call there for us. And then, you know, we had a season high last night in, in points. Uh, we're getting there offensively. We we'll still turn it over way too much. But uh, I've also had people ask me, hey, are you going to slow it down a little bit? Are you going to try to slow it down so you can live with those turnovers. I, my answer every time is no. This is how we want to play. These kids have to learn how to play that way. Um, and, but we are scoring out of transition, which is nice. If we weren't scoring out of transition, I, I might think about that a little bit and slow it down. But we are scoring points there, so we're going to continue to play that way. And a lot of those turnovers are in half court as well. Um, and that's just getting to know our offense better, getting to know the flow. Uh, a lot of these kids have not played together. And when you have kids that haven't played together, it's going to take some time to limit those turnovers. Um, a lot of credit to last night win goes to Coach Paula. That was her scout. Uh, there was a couple times during the game I was starting to question her a little bit. She stuck to her guns like a good assistant does. She stuck to her guns, and I trusted her. And boy, it was, she had a great scout, uh, especially defensively. Mastermind there, and that we we really guarded last night. Um, <coughs> We're gonna guard every night, but as I tell the kids, you know, I don't want to just hang our head on defense. We gotta start to score some people a little bit too. You know, look at that football team. Look at the way they score. All right, we need to outscore some people, uh, and that's gonna come. That will come. And the, the nice thing that you can see last night is we had some jumpers go down. Okay, that that really helps on the offensive end when you have some kids that can make some jumpers um, and big timely jumpers. It seems like every time they kind of cut to that lead. We either we hit a three or we get an end one and you know, convert their offensively. All the credit goes to the kids there. I told them afterwards, I just never sensed a, no one was ever rattled during that game. And I might have acted that way. You guys are watching me. I, I, get, I get a lot of comments on my, my actions on the sideline, but uh, I wasn't rattled. 
I promise you, I promise you, I wasn't ready. And the kids weren't either. They, they, they just always had a calm about themselves. And they had, they were confident that they knew they were going to pull that victory out. Uh, so all credit to the kids right there. That's a great win for us. Um, we got a tough stretch coming up. We leave Friday. We go to the University of Sioux Falls. You talk about a prolific scoring team. They, they can really put points on the board in a hurry. Uh, they got kids that can shoot from all over the court. Uh, really good freshman of the year, last year the Norton Sun and a post player. Um, so we're going to have a, our hands full there defensively. But the way we're playing defensively right now, I, I like the way, I like our matchups going to that game. Then we play Northern States on Sunday, who's a top 25 team in Division II women's basketball. Uh, another senior laden team. They're, they're going to be very tough to play. Uh, Again, I feel good about that game because it's Coach Powell's scout, so I feel good about that. It showed a good game plan ready to go for us. Uh, so that's our weekend coming up. Uh, again, static about how we played Friday, Saturday, and especially last night. It's always great to get a win against anybody, but mainly BH. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, uh, last week was official signing day for Division II women's basketball. Uh, we got three commitments from three kids that have that will be playing for us next year. Two of them right here in Rapid City. Rapid City Stevens Products, Taylor Molstead, uh, who's a very nice scoring athletic guard. Uh, then Marissa Hercher, who is a post player that fits us perfectly. Uh, she can score on the block. And then this summer, all it took is one time, I saw her knock down a couple of threes and I called up Coach Paul and I said, right, we gotta get this kid now. We gotta get her. I love, you guys know me, you see the way our post play, any post player can shoot, I'm going to recruit him, okay? And this kid is a perfect fit for us. She's long, she's athletic, and she can score all over the place, just like Taylor did. Uh, so really excited about those two joining us next year. Then we got another post player out of Lake Stevens, Washington. Uh, Coach Collins, this old stopping ground, has been there a number of times. Uh, just another you know, perfect fit for us as far as post player and how we want to play. This kid really could be one of our fastest players next year at 6-1. And then, you know, very vertically gifted as well. Um, she, it can score. She's got a nice little jump shot off the 18 feet. We'll work with that to work past the arc. Again, we want those close players to shoot threes. Uh, but athletically, she's, she's going to be a real special talent for us. So last week was a big, big day for us, exciting day. Uh, again, a lot of credit to Coach Paula there. Uh, she, Carried the load on a lot of that recruiting. Um, really helped us get those kids here, uh, building the relationship and everything else, and selling the school and selling what we have going right now. I mean, we have a lot of good things going right now. If you see this play, uh, you can see that uh, this team is gelling nicely. They're starting to buy in what we want to do offensively and defensively. And uh, we've got some good young talent coming. Uh, so these kids can fit in very nicely with what we got going on right now. Uh, any questions about last night's game, Friday, Saturday, the stretch we got coming up? Recruits? Covered it all? Yes. If we're here facing out on the floor and you're not around, how do we come <laughs> Okay, I'll answer that how I, when I told the official. Okay? I told the official, all right, anytime it's under a minute, do you think we're going to try to foul? He says, no. I said, then we, we didn't foul there, did we? We're trying to get out of the way. Uh, okay. All right, so I just, yeah. If that was, Julie, my wife, uh, had a few choice words for me on that, that action. I said, you know, I don't mind just skipping around, dancing a little bit. When you fall to your knees and do some kind of yoga pose, we, we got to get that done. Nice. I was, that was a big play. That was a big play. I was not happy with that. I'd rather do a yoga pose and get a technical foul. Check it. Anybody else? Thank you guys again. Appreciate it. Thank you, Buffalo Bobbins. A couple more coaches here. Uh, regional meets coming up for cross country. Welcome up, Steve Jones. <laughs> yeah, so we, last time I was up here, we just got back from our conference meet. This time we're heading down to the region. We're in Denver this week. Uh, so it's not as long a trip as we had last time. We still get to go up a little bit in elevation. Uh, probably the toughest challenge on the men's side is going to be the fact that they go from an 8K to a 10K race. So they add a mile and a quarter to what they're racing. And uh, 
basically what that does in addition to stretching the race out about eight minutes is it takes and, and it slows things down a little bit on the front side of the race. So that gives us a little bit, a little bit of an opportunity to, to get into our groove a little bit better than when we were at the RMAC and had a tight course and had to get out hard in the first hundred meters. Uh, it's down in Washington Park, the men will start at 11 o'clock. The, uh, the women run at 11.15, so we get to sit around in the cold for a little while and hopefully it's not too bad out. But uh, women's race will be a good one. Should be, uh, you know, my, my bet is Adams is gonna, gonna dominate for that on the women's side, but we get six teams out of our, out of our region, go to the national meet, it's more than any other region except for the West, which is the only other region to get additional teams to the national meet. Uh, so it's gonna be a tough one for us. Uh, and we're just looking to try and improve on what we did at the, at the conference meet, come back and have a little bit of a, a little bit of a redemption day. Are there any questions I can answer? How do you qualify as an individual? Yeah, as an individual, basically you have to be in the, you have to be one of the top five runners on a non, uh, on a non-qualifying team. So because we. Because we qualify six teams to nationals, that puts it a little bit deeper in the field for us, but it'll still probably be top 25 to finish to go to the national game. Any other questions? If it's on the schedule, we'll be there. The difference is they don't clear the snow for us. <laughs> they didn't for us either. <laughs> we do have our lone senior here today, Tyler Knack. Tyler wants to come up. He can say a couple of words about his last, last time going to the region. country me as a college athlete, which is kind of kind of a shell shocking experience and never really thought of that until now, so thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we got we got seven seven runners that are ready to go. Um, throughout the season we have a strong number one two guy and then a pretty strong group of uh, three through five, six, seven that follow in behind. So our biggest challenge is gonna be pushing those the second tier of runners up. And that's what we've been training all year, we're trying to get a you know, team working aspect. And so grabbing onto our jerseys each other and then pushing each other through the race is going to be, be key out there. And, and um, you know, Coach said redemption, and just to kind of remind you, at the conference meet, we weren't far enough into the field, so we need to push farther into the field. We're strong, we score strong if we're higher up in the field. Um, so, so that's really kind of the game plan. We're going to just put it all out there the next two days. Um, this, this week we call Peak Week because we've been training really hard up until now, and then we just kind of relax, relax and let our bodies, you know, really in, enjoy running. So the next two days, we're going to go frolic through the snow and just have some fun. And then Friday, Saturday, it's time to take care of business. So. Any questions, I guess? All right. Thanks for coming out. One more season recap this time. Hard Rock for Volleyball with head coach Tiffany McKeon.
year we had 11 in practice every day with our one that we medically registered. It was actually Coach Paula came into practice two to three days a week and actually scrimmaged with our team. <laughs> Which was ingenious um, when we kind of discovered it because obviously as we know she's a phenomenal athlete but she really came in and challenged our girls and I thought it was great that we could spend a lot of time this year just playing a lot. And that was one thing that we talked about was in order to be able to compete at, compete at the RMAC level we've got to be able to have people in our gym, high caliber athleticism, great positive energy and be able to bring something to the table and so it was great to have uh, Kenny come in each day and play with these kids and I felt like it was great to have another adult mentor with this group as well. Um, weekend one, we finished one and three. Weekend two, we were two and two. Weekend three, we were three and oh. So I felt like we really kind of made some progress through our season this year, which was fantastic. Um, had a new assistant this year. I really miss Jenny Malone. Steve, since you're sitting here, it's kind of reminded me. I missed having Jenny with us this year. Just a great uh, assistant coach, but it was nice to have kind of an older mentor a little bit. Don't tell Doug, I just called him older, but just brings a lot of knowledge to this team because um, he's been a head coach, and so it was nice to have just a, a different way to kind of look at the team this year. So uh, going into next year for the RMAC, uh, we had one senior on our roster. I know we talked a lot about Carson Garcia this fall. She finished just shy of 4,000 assists, 1,500 digs for her career. Started every game as a hard rocker except for one her freshman year that she was out due to injury. So it was a great player and a great leader. Um, we're really going to miss her next year, but only losing one senior for us was really critical this year to be able to, to bring in um, just some younger players in our 2014 season, but also address our recruiting needs for 2015. Um, so losing one senior, we're returning 11 players next year. We have signed three players, just like Coach Larson, our signing date was last week as well. Um, two players um, that I can't talk about, but we, we have to wait for them to uh, submit their deposits before we can address them in the spring, but we signed a defensive specialist, we signed a right side hitter, um, we've also signed a 6-1 middle hitter, her name is Justine Langus, she's from Highlands Ranch, Colorado, uh, very athletic middle, very quick arm swing, she's going to add a lot offensively and blocking wise defensively as a middle or a right side as well, I'd really love to see a 6-1 right side um, on our team, but um, she's going to bring a lot of athleticism to our program and then we're going to try to bring in a couple more extras. Um, as well. Um, some things we're going to have to really address playing in the RMAC. We've talked with our team, especially in our post um, in individual meetings, is we've got to be a lot physical next fall with your Metro and your Minds, as you guys saw, Colorado Christian and um, some of those teams here. We're going to have to bring a lot of energy and a lot of strength and conditioning to this program to be able to compete a lot better in the RMAC next year. You know, being 13 and 10, I think we gained a lot of confidence and enthusiasm and things like that, but in order to compete in the RMAC, we want to try to finish in the top half of the RMAC. If not higher, we're going to have to bring a lot more to the table. So um, we'll just keep plugging away recruiting-wise. But overall, I felt last year was such a whirlwind for myself. It was really great just to kind of be able to kind of stay a little bit more relaxed, be a lot more positive with this team, give them a lot more individual attention. And so just kind of excited about it's going to be a lot of hard work going into our 2015 season. but. I'm excited about the spring that we get to spend with our smaller group to be able to really push them to improve and we'll kind of see where we can go next fall. Does anybody have any questions for me? Perfect. Thank you. All right, before we let you go, a couple of things to tell you about. Buffalo Wild Wings does a great job. You can leave a tip at your table group up with some folks, leave some tips for our servers today. And next week, we're not going to have a luncheon. Uh, Thanksgiving holiday coming up, so next week we're off, and then we'll be back uh, the next Wednesday, back in the Christensen Hall of Fame. So thanks for coming out. Thanks to Buffalo Wild Wings. Have a great week, everybody.